Oh, hello, it's a great southern ancient miniature man here, and I would like to share a method for basing uh, small units um, that's a little bit different to what um, is normally done. So for most um, smaller pieces, I usually use some sort of modeling paste like this one. Uh, and, you know, if I'm doing a single figure, I just usually say mount it on, um, on the board, on the, the piece, and then... Um, Put that modeling putty around to smooth around the, the integrated base uh, and then you know put a bit of gravel and a few stones and so on uh, and that works quite well for single figures the problem is though once you've got a, a decent sized unit like this it's very hard to get that modeling paste sort of in between the horses um, and make a smooth finish without damaging uh, all that hard work by smearing modeling paste on them and you know just generally not getting a very smooth and uh, nice finish so what i thought about was what if you could actually pour something on there that would just um, self level and would set solidly and uh, the obvious solution there is a two-part epoxy resin which you can get at just about any uh, hobby store or if not at any hardware store um, only problem with them is they're not overly cheap so i got some from the local um, craft store here and it costs around about seventy dollars or so for this sort of volume uh, it lasted me about a year i went back and it was costing over a hundred dollars um, so i had a look on ebay and good old ebay and it ended up costing about 35 so you know almost not much more than a third of the cost at the local hobby store so i like supporting local stores but uh, when the cost differential is that big i, think I might support ebay um, so the main thing I found with this is really important to get the ratios right. So for that I was initially just using the kitchen scales, but they just weren't quite accurate enough for low, um, you know, low measurements. So I ended up getting this fairly cheap and basic, um, you know, low measuring scales again on eBay. Again, pretty cheap, cost me around about ten dollars, I think. Um, so that can measure things, you know, like five or six grams without any great trouble. Um, that's the one I've got, but the, you can find lots of them on eBay, I'm sure. Uh, and yeah, sent from China. Didn't take long to get here, and do very, um, uh, you know, very cheap and works well. So I'll we'll turn it off for a minute. So the key thing here is obviously to have some sort of frame around the um, around your unit so that the uh, epoxy doesn't just spill out. So I just use good old masking tape. The key thing is to ensure that you get one long piece that um, wraps around it very tightly so there's no gaps that it can spill through so if we start at the front we want one piece that goes all the way around and we want it very nice and tight particularly at the front if there's a little gap and a spill at the back it's not a big disaster but you really don't want it seeping around the front and getting out there so we'll do the front first, wrap it around as tight as you can. It doesn't have to be up very high because it's not really going to be having a maybe two or three mil uh, depth for the epoxy resin. Bring it around the back. Is it going to be long enough? Oh, it's not long enough. <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to do that again because I just found my trial and error that if you're not quite there and you put another piece on there's always a little gap and it always just dribbles out i'll leave that for something else get a proper long bit this time make sure this works so again we're going to start at the front and wrap it all the way around it's probably so long i'm going to get tangled on things that's a problem <laughs> anyway so there it is nice adherence to the front to the side other side probably tight around here it's going to be way too long this time anyway let's bring it around cut off the excess oh man always when you're filming things go horribly wrong now let's cut it back about here Okay, let's 
get them on again. So this guy comes to here. This one, right all the way around, round, round, round to there. Okay. So again, just want to take a sec to ensure that it's pretty tight, tight as you can get the whole way around it. All right, good. Let's put him over there for a moment. Okay, so now we're going to measure out the epoxy resin. So a little measuring tray. We'll zero the scales. They're zeroed already. All right, and it's two to one ratio. So I'm. I reckon we need about, um, let's say 10 mils, that'll be plenty. So why don't I do, I might do six of this and three other nine mils. There we go. Oh, it's easy to overshoot some. Almost seven mils. So I'm going to put in almost four to go just over 10 I'll we'll go back to zero. And then we want to be also we've gone to zero, so we want it to be about four this time. And a tiny bit more, one more drop. All right, four point two nine. That'll be plenty. Okay, so obviously to pour it on now, you're just going to get a clear uh, epoxy, which. If you're doing a water effect, that's perfect. But if you want to do a soil, then you can certainly add some paint to it to color it. So I've tried lots of different paints, uh, just cheap acrylics from the craft shop and the more ex expensive, um, you know, hobby paints, the Vallejo and the Citadel and the uh, MSP, and they all work fine. And none of them seem to um, affect the setting process in any adverse way. So I just put in some cheap... Um, craft glue, uh, uh, craft uh, paint, that's two dollars for that whole big tube. Just squidge in a bit and I'll give it a good stir with the back of the brush. And give it a minute so I can get rid of the scales now. I've done the job. Thank you. Stir it all up. Put a bit more black paint in there than I normally would, probably more than I need, but anyway, I think it'll hope it'll still set perfectly. It always has before. The only time I've had problems is when the ratio was quite out. And that little bit of uh, inaccuracy is not really not a problem, it's just when a major inaccuracy between the two that it didn't set very well. Alright. So now yeah, it's just a matter of pouring it on really and spreading it around pretty evenly and trying not to pour it onto your Nice cavalry guys. Okay, between there. You know, on the front it generally um, equalizes, spreads itself around quite well. I'll just tip it up a little bit, different angles to spread it all the way. So you can get a bit in there between the two horses. Challenge. <laughs> Where the back you two would be good. This is just going to be the perfect amount, I reckon. So once I've got it in and I'm happy with it all, I'm going to leave it for around about two hours till it's half set. Then I come back and sprinkle some grit and sand and stones and so on into it to um, integrate that into the base, and that obviously uh, secures it all really well. Um, the problem is if you put it in now, it'll just sink to the bottom and it'll just push the level of the um, epoxy up above the bases and onto the feet of the horses and so on. So you want to leave that for a few hours till it's reasonably set. So let's just spread that around a little bit and um, make sure it covers all the wood at the bottom of this base. You can tease it around with a brush. Oh, careful, almost went over the top there. <laughs> with the brush if you need to. Or there, the blunt end of the wooden end of the brush. Let's help it run over the top of the uh, integrated bases as well to get them 
nicely involved. The idea is really to hide them so they just disappear into the scene. Um, that's pretty good. I need some more down the side there. Squidge that around. Round, round. All right, I think you get the idea. So I'll leave this for a few hours and we'll come back and we'll sprinkle a bit of grit and sand and so on. Right, so here we are. It's about two and a half hours later and it's uh, started to dry. It's a little bit um, tacky now. You can see with the, the um, wire there, you can make a bit of a dent in it. It slowly closes back, but it's certainly quite tacky. So I think it's ready to put some basing stuff on it. So I've got a mixture here, just gravel, uh, some sort of um, kitty litter, sand, all that stuff goes quite nicely gives you a pretty natural look and then we just need to put on some grass and um, maybe some little shrubs and stuff later uh, you can paint the paint over these um, you know the gravel and the rocks but sometimes it actually looks quite good just as it is so I'll have a look once it's done and decide whether I bother doing a little bit of painting over the top of it as well you should put a lot extra on that more than is required because a lot of it won't, the top level just won't stick anyway, so it'll come off. Just brush that off later on, and collect it for use next time. We'll stick all that on, and I'll basically just leave this overnight to set. Peel the tape off in the morning and see how it looks. All right, easy as that. Okay, so here we are the next day, 24 hours later. Just a little bit concerned that that amount of paint I put in maybe could have um, affected the setting of the epoxy. Uh, as I said before, I've never had that problem, but let's just give it a look and probe it a bit there. Oh, there we go. Right, so it's rock solid. So even that large amount of, um, of acrylic paint didn't cause any adverse effects with the setting, which is excellent to know. I'll just get rid of the excess... Stuff you can see a little bit did seep through and set on the bottom, but not a big deal. Let's just tap away any excess sand and grit off there, and then we're going to take the tape off. And the interesting thing is, even though the tape is very sticky and the epoxy is very sticky, doesn't they don't seem to stick to each other? I'm not sure why that is, but it, it works quite well generally peeling it off without too much problem. Let's keep that off. Having said that, it'll probably stick. It's never done before this time. It's coming up pretty well. It's stuck a little bit on the bottom where some of the silicon seep through. But not major deal i usually just uh, once i've got all the tape off just do a very light um coat of black paint around that edge as well i've already pre-painted anyway i'll do that in a minute off camera you don't have to watch that uh but there it is so i did say maybe i would paint the base but i think it actually looks pretty good for a dry rocky sandy environment that they're charging through especially when you add a bit of um a bit of grass, a few tufts, maybe a shrub or two. So I'll do that and then I'll put it on the turntable to demonstrate the final product when it's all tidied up. See you then. And here's the finished base. Epoxy resin two part. Very simple and easy method. The cavalry units, if you're interested, are obviously Macedonian um, companion cavalry. Uh, some of the horses are metal from, pretty sure they're from Warlord Games, I've had them for a long time. That one at the front now, the brown, light brown one is a, actually a Numidian uh, plastic Victrix. And then the other plastic one is this guy here, he's actually from the armoured Persian kit which comes with some um, options to make them as mercenary Greeks, so that's what I've done for him. So there you go, that is a option for doing these more sort of complex integrated units um, and having a nice firm base, all solidly adherent and 
a nice smooth flat um, ground finish. So I hope you like it, like, subscribe, bell button, all that helps grow the channel, helps add content. I'm looking at doing one on the uh, Cretan Arches soon and also uh, at some stage fairly soon I'm going to review the new War, um, War Games Atlantic horses which you can get on their own which is a pretty cool idea. So until then, all the best, see you later.